President Trump recently released details about the new budget that he's going to be proposing to Congress. Now, in this new budget is a huge gift to defense contractors. This budget will be a public safety and national security budget, very much based on those two, with plenty of other things, but very strong. And it will include a historic increase in defense spending to rebuild the depleted military of the United States of America at a time we most need it. So clearly, if he's claiming that this increase to defense spending will be historic, then it's going to be a pretty sharp increase, right? Well, how much precisely? So Trump is aiming to increase military spending by $54 billion, and he claims that this is necessary because the U.S. military has been depleted and needs to be rebuilt. Okay, so let's talk about that for a minute, because Republicans always like to talk about how our military is so weak, how it's depleted, and how it needs to be rebuilt. Well, this is how depleted our American military is. So in 2015, more than half of U.S. discretionary spending went towards the military. Now, if you think that that's a lot, that's actually a less amount than in previous years. So in 2013, 57% of discretionary spending went to the military. And when you look at the numbers from 2014, we spent $640 billion on the military. Now, I don't have access to recent data, but in 2014, when you compare our, quote, depleted military to the next eight biggest military spenders, we spend more than all of them combined, and a majority of these countries are allies to the United States. So we spend three times as much on the military compared to China, and about six times more than Russia. So when Republican politicians like to tell you that our military is depleted, it's a complete lie. We have the strongest military in the history of man. We do not have a depleted military. Our military is modern. Our military does not need to be rebuilt. So the question is, why would they lie? What's the point of lying about this? What do they have to gain? Well, you see... It's this whole circle of corruption. Republican lawmakers and Democratic lawmakers, they take money from defense contractors. Now, defense contractors are industries like Boeing. They make money when we go to war. So they will give campaign contributions to politicians and then they'll kind of nudge them. They'll lobby them and say, hey, you know what? We just gave you this contribution of $100,000 or in the case of Donald Trump, $300,000 from defense contractors in total. And they'll say, you know what, why don't we do some more defense spending? And then what happens is, lo and behold, these companies who benefit from defense spending, like Boeing, well, they get a new government contract, and all of a sudden they're making more jets for the American military. Companies are making more tanks for the military, even if we have too many tanks, even if we don't necessarily need this equipment. Just the fact that we're spending... They love it. It's a moneymaker and it benefits the politicians because these same defense contractors who are getting rich and profiting off of whenever we raise uh, the defense spending, well, they buy off our politicians. So it's all just this big circle of corruption and it's so frustrating. And this is a conflict of interest. It's legalized bribery. And it's why Republicans really want you to think that our military is depleted. Like I said, Trump took 300,000 from the defense industry. And when you look at warmongers like John McCain, he also took more than 300,000. So 300,000 is probably about the right price to just completely buy off a politician and get them to be your puppet. So when it's all said and done, this isn't about rebuilding our broken military. This is about defense contractors wanting to make money. So when Donald Trump says we're going to have a historic increase in defense spending, it's completely unnecessary. Because when you consider all the other issues that are facing the American people, we don't need to be worrying about the profitability of defense contractors and the military industrial complex. One in six Americans face hunger. One in six. That means that nearly 50 million Americans struggle to put food on the table. And children are at an even higher risk. So more than one in five children risk hunger. And when you control for children of color, one in three risk going hungry. Now, some states have higher food insecurity rates than the national average, which is about 15%. So this includes states like Arkansas, Mississippi, Texas, Tennessee, where about one in five people are literally going hungry. Now, if you don't really care about children going hungry in the U.S., well, here's an issue that should resonate with Donald Trump voters because this is what he claims to care about. He claims that he cares about veterans. However, currently, we have 57,000 homeless veterans, nearly 60,000 homeless veterans in the country. So instead of spending money to get them housing, to get them out of homelessness, we're spending more money on war so that way we create even more homeless veterans. This is unbelievable. This is where our priorities lie in the country. We have students facing crippling student loan debt. We have people dying or going bankrupt because they have health insurance, but it won't cover their illnesses. And Donald Trump is choosing to spend money on this. 
We're not a compassionate country. Our politicians are choosing to put the profitability of defense contractors above people who are actually hurting the poor, the working class, homeless veterans, and not just only homeless veterans, homeless people in general. You know, I hear stories like this and I'm embarrassed because the rest of the world, they must think we're really a joke because who does this? What kind of a country is spending this much on the military when they have people in their own country, one in five going hungry? When one in five children are going hungry, if you choose to prioritize a military that's already bloated, you're just an immoral person. And where are the mainstream media pundits who always ask Bernie Sanders and Jill Stein, you know, if it comes to issues like canceling student debt and instituting a single-payer healthcare system, uh, they always ask, well, how are you going to pay for this? Where are those pundits now asking Donald Trump where he's going to pay for this? We already have a bloated military budget, yet we just hear crickets from the mainstream media pundits. They're not holding him accountable here. They'd rather talk about Trump's connection to Russia rather than this, which I think is a scandal. Anytime the defense budget goes up, I think that's a scandal, but the media doesn't want to cover it, and they're just, they don't care. If you, if you want to actually increase the budget for education or healthcare, well, you know what? You better damn well have a plan to pay for that. But if you want to increase the money for a defense spending, no problem. We've got no issue with that. Any politician who is willing to take this dirty money, this blood money from defense contractors to blow up our already ridiculous military defense budget, they're just bad people. They're bad people. You can cut defense by two-thirds and still be the number one spender in the world, still have the biggest military in comparison with everyone else. Shame on Donald Trump. Support this podcast by joining the independent progressive media revolution today at humanistreport.com.